One of America's favorite classic comfort foods is meatloaf, and when you wrap that meatloaf in bacon, well, that's just heaven. We've got a really easy recipe for meatloaf today, and we're going to start off by using a supermarket shortcut, and that supermarket shortcut is meatloaf mix. Now, a traditional meatloaf can be made in lots of different ways, but I think the best is made when you have a mixture of veal, pork, and beef. I like to call it the trifecta. Supermarkets now carry what they call meatloaf mix, and you'll need about two and a half pounds of it, and that goes into a great big mixing bowl. Now, now, the first thing we're going to do is add to this some breadcrumbs. Now, you can make your own breadcrumbs, but I always buy them in the supermarket because I'm all about the shortcuts. Then, here's where we're going to add in a little moisture. This is whole milk. That's really going to absorb those breadcrumbs and really help pull it all together. From there, we're going to drop in chopped onions. Chopped, uncooked bacon. There's going to be bacon on top of this and bacon inside, I know. It's so good, you're gonna, not gonna believe how tasty it is. Plus, that's also gonna help with the moisture as well because that bacon will render down inside the meatloaf. Then we're gonna add Worcestershire sauce. Now, when I was a little boy, I had such a hard time pronouncing this. Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire sauce. But it's really tasty and really lovely. Then we're going to add to that some black pepper, some garlic salt, and finally, to help bind all of this together, two eggs. Now, the best way to mix this, we all have them and they're built in, your two hands. Okay, here we go. So get your hands in there. I've already washed my hands, so I'm ready to go. What I like to do is I just turn the meat mixture into the other ingredients. Now, we'll get this all put together. I'm gonna handle this just as little as possible so it stays nice and tender. All right, then we're gonna get this into a nine by 13. Now, I'm not gonna butter or grease this nine by 13. Because remember, there's bacon in the, in the meat. There's gonna be bacon on top of the meat. Plus the meat itself will render its own fat. So that'll help keep it from sticking. All right. Now let's get into our meatloaf pan and make sure that this resembles a traditional meatloaf. And make sure that you leave room on either side of the meatloaf and on the ends because we're gonna wrap that bacon around and we need a little room to do that. Now, get yourself a pound of bacon. Now, I know your temptation will be to get thick sliced bacon. Resist the temptation. Get thin sliced bacon. It cooks more evenly in the oven, and you'll get a really nice wrap with that. So let's go with some thin sliced bacon. We're gonna start in the middle, and then just bring it down the side. Now, you're going to have a little bit of overhang, and I'm gonna show you how to work with that. I've got a little spurtle tool that'll help you with that. Now, it can overlap just a little bit, and that's fine. What I love about putting these bacon slices on, after the meatloaf comes out of the oven, I use the bacon slices as a guide to cut slices. And so you get really even slices that way. Now, I've gotten the entire meatloaf cover, but you can see there's a lot of overhang. I like to grab this little spurtle guy, the skinny spurt, and then just tuck it under the meatloaf, like so. Use your fingers, use your hands, use the spurtle if you need to guide it in once you lift up the meatloaf. Get my tool here, make sure it's nice and even. So we've got some baking to do. Let's get this into that 350 degree oven. So an hour and a half has gone by and I turned the bake function off the oven and I turned it on to broil. This is my little secret for crisping the bacon, but leave it under that broiler only for three minutes. You want the bacon to crisp, not burn. Now we need to dress it up. This is meatloaf after all, and what's traditional is a little ketchup on top. Now, some folks like to put the ketchup on and then put it back in the oven, but I think this is already piping hot and ready to go. All we want to do is brush it with a little ketchup, and you choose your favorite type. Now, if you like just a regular garden variety ketchup, that's fine. If you have a spicy ketchup, that could be fun, too. So what we're going to do is just paint this on. I have a little silicone pastry brush. If you've got just any kind of brush in your pantry or in your drawer, you're going to be fine. What I like to do, because the ends sometimes can be a little dry out of the oven, I always make sure that they get nice and brushed with the ketchup. Now, you can cut it inside the casserole dish, but I think it's better if you put it on the platter that you're going to serve it and then slice it. So I like to grab two forks, go in from either side, and lift this up and over and onto the cutting board. Now, one more little tip I'll give you. Easy to slice if you follow the slices of bacon, and that way you get nice, even slices with this meatloaf, and then serve it with your favorite, oh, I don't know, God's most perfect food, mac and cheese, mashed potatoes, whatever you love. All right, here we go. This is perfect. American classic comfort food with, of course, a little divine swine equals a really fantastic, crowd-pleasing, family-friendly meal. 
If you love this recipe and would like to see more of my half homemade series, simply hit the subscribe button because we're always going to use supermarket shortcuts to deliver fantastic food in record time for you and your family.